Hi everyone, I'm Ann. And I'm Tara, and we're nurses on the fourth floor here at Wesley Lone. And we're going to talk with you today about things that you should know before you come in for your robotic prostatectomy surgery. Um, these are only guidelines. If your surgeon tells you anything different, then of course you go by what they tell you. Um, first, we're going to talk about the anatomy of the prostate, what it does. It's one of the sex glands of the male reproductive system. Normally, it's about the size of a walnut, but yours is going to be a little bit bigger with what's going mm -hmm. on. Um, it sits below your bladder and in front of your rectum. That's how the doctors can do those digital exams to uh, feel it. It encircles the urethra, which is a tube that drains urine out from your body. Um, its function is to secrete a milky fluid into the urethra at the point of ejaculation. And that's what the prostate does. And now most of the time you will see a urinary physical therapist over at the urology office. Mm -hmm. And these ladies um, work with you uh, to regain your urinary control. They mm -hmm. use biofeedback um, to help you strengthen those muscles in the pelvic floor, uh, and this will help you become dry after surgery. And you usually see them at least one to two times before you go in for your surgery. However, if you do not see them um, before your surgery, this in no way will impact your urinary continence. Before your surgery, your doctor is going to instruct you on certain medicines that you should continue and certain, certain medicines that you should stop before your mm -hmm. surgery. Usually you're going to stop taking any um, blood thinners five to seven days before your surgery. That includes Coumadin, Plavix, Paletal, Aspirin. Mm -hmm. uh, you may be instructed to take um, your diabetic medicine before surgery or also any heart medicine or any blood pressure medicine okay. prior. And don't forget, um, herbals and um, vitamins count as medications as well, so you will be instructed to probably stop those five to seven days before your surgery. Mm -hmm. Prior to surgery, you're going to be um, on clear liquids. Um, so the day before your surgery, you're going to have nothing but clear liquids all day, and then at midnight, you're going to take um, or nothing to eat or drink after midnight. Mm -hmm. So for example, if your surgery was on Monday, then on Sunday, you will start to have clear liquids that morning, have clear liquids till midnight, and then you'll stop everything at midnight, Sunday night. Mm -hmm. And examples of clear liquids um, are anything that doesn't have pulp or solidity mm -hmm. in them. So for example, milk and orange juice are not clear liquids. Um, clear liquids include, of course, water, um, coffee Gatorade. is mm -hmm. coffee is a clear liquid as long as you don't put milk in it. Uh, you can put sweeteners in it. Mm -hmm. um, Gatorade, broth, uh, popsicles, Jello. They're all examples yep. of clear liquids. You're going to be instructed on some type of bowel prep to do prior to your surgery, much like you did with your biopsy. Mm -hmm. um, and your surgeon will instruct you on these instructions. Typically we see um, patients take magnesium citrate the day before surgery and also a fleet's enema. We encourage you to do the um, magnesium citrate probably around lunchtime the day before because mm -hmm. it takes six to eight hours to work. So you don't want to be up all night um, going to the bathroom with that. Usually the fleet's enema you can do at supper. Prior to surgery, you'll come in for a pre-op visit, usually seven to 10 days before mm -hmm. surgery. That's when they do blood work, EKGs, x-rays, get you ready uh, for surgery. Your nurse will also go over your health history mm -hmm. with you prior to surgery. You also meet with anesthesia, usually the morning of surgery. You will be arriving at the hospital early mm -hmm. um, on the day of surgery, and that's so we can get you ready for that. Please bring a list of all medications anytime you come to the hospital for any of those appointments. You'll also want to bring your glasses, glasses and your hearing aids because we want you to hear and see us mm -hmm. while you're here. Um, also, we recommend that you bring comfortable clothing um, when you come for your jogging surgery. Pants. Jogging pants. Something, nothing that buckles or um, like jeans. You wouldn't want to wear that. You want like Sweatpants. Sweatpants. Something with elastic mm -hmm. band. Um, also leave any valuables at home. You don't need any extra cash, credit cards, anything like that um, here at the hospital. So Anne, we wanted to go over some questions that come up in mm -hmm. the class frequently. Um, the first one is, where do I park when I get to the hospital? You can park in the main parking lot or you can also use our valet service, which runs from 5 a.m. till 6 p.m. So you can just drive up to the main door and a valet will take your car and park it. Okay, well which door do I go into when I come to the hospital? Um, the main door is this, actually the side door. It's near the uh, fountain or the cancer center. Okay, and go over again, when do clear liquids start? 
Clear liquids are going to start 24 hours prior to your surgery. So say your surgery is on Monday morning, when you wake up on Sunday, you're going to start those clear liquids. Okay. Now if I have sleep apnea, should I bring my CPAP machine? Please bring your CPAP machine. Um, bring your face mask and all your tubing, and you can actually bring your machine too. We'd like to thank you for being with us today, and we hope that it was very educational for you. If you have any questions, you can reach us at 336-832-0314. And just remember, we're not here every day, so it might take a couple days to get back with you. Or you can reach us at prostateclass at conehealth.com. Be sure to check out our next video in the series. We'll be talking about what to expect while you're in the hospital.